Hey guys, Andy from Estella's Revenge, and I'm here today with a review of a book that I thought I was going to really enjoy. And while I did enjoy parts of it, The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova was not an absolute home run for me, and I was really, really surprised. Just tons and tons of people that I'm friends with on Goodreads or whose blogs I read absolutely adore this book. And so I went into it with very high hopes, but I was a little bit disappointed by the time I got done. So, let me tell you about this book. Um, it has a great premise. It's about a historian who is on the trail of Dracula. Um, and when I say Dracula, I mean the historical Vlad Tepish, who in this book is literally, possibly, a vampire who is alive after hundreds of years. Um, so, we have a group of historians. Um, specifically, this story is told by an unnamed female narrator whose father, Paul, received a strange book when he was in graduate school. He was working on his PhD, and he's like in the dark library at night or whatever, and the strange book shows up in his pile of books. And it's like a leather-bound, really old book with a dragon on it. Um, a lot of empty pages, but he starts to do some research into this book and the symbol of the dragon, and it leads him to Vlad Tepish, the historical Dracula, um, who in this book may be a real vampire. And so he seeks help from his dissertation advisor, and his dissertation advisor reveals that he actually received one of these books when he was a younger man as well. And so... Um, after a mysterious disappearance, Paul is really taken on a wild goose chase to, number one, find out what happened to his friend and advisor, to find out what's up with this book, and hopefully to find out if there is a real Dracula. Um, so it sounds really, really promising, but it's a 648-page book, and it's kind of a story within a story within a story within a story within a story, because we have... Paul's PhD advisor story, uh, Bartholomew Rossi is his name, and his story is told through letters. So then we have Paul's story, which is also told through letters to his daughter, and we have historical documents, and we have songs, and we have folk tales, and we have all this stuff that comes together to tell the story. And because I'm such, you know, a bibliophile, I thought this would be a real winner for me. But what I found out was really that there were too many layers and there was too much detail that it kind of bogged down the story just a little bit. Um, I did feel that by tempering the story through letters that it helped build some suspense. But when the voices of the people writing the letters are very similar, it becomes quite watered down. And letters to me, should sound like letters. They should read like letters, but they just read like chapters of a novel that had a date slapped on them. So I thought it was a little bit of a fail in that regard. Um, I also thought the book could have done with a good bit more editing. Um, there were a lot of details about what they were eating, what they were drinking, what they were wearing, what they were doing on the umpteenth train that they were on. Um, so I just felt like if this book had been more heavily edited, it would have been much more impactful. Um, a little more concise telling would have benefited this book a little bit, in my opinion. So it was a lot of fun in that it really is well suited to this time of year, to the fall, to the autumn, uh, to Halloween time, so on and so forth. And I'm very much looking forward to reading the original Dracula novel, which I've never finished. Um, but I've always been quite drawn to the historical Vlad Tepish and his reign of terror, more or less. <laughs> um, you know, that was something I saw in documentaries and stuff when I was a kid, and so I was really kind of taken by that. But I felt like there needed to be more Vlad Tepish. There needed to be more vampire lore in this book. There was a lot of lore, but it was more folklore and not specific vampire lore. Um, so that part got watered down a little bit as well. So it was an easy read. It would have been a quick read probably if I had read it um, more during the daylight hours. This was one that I read at night a lot before bed. So perhaps if I had read it in a shorter amount of space, it would have been a little bit better for me. But definitely a book worth trying, but it just didn't quite live up to my expectations. But that's okay. 
it is what it is. I hope you all are having a great weekend. I hope that if you've read this book or if you plan to try it, you'll share your feelings with me, and I'll see you soon. Bye.